What's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCap, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. And before we get into this, I just want to apologize if I or my energy sound a bit different, if I sound a bit off or just a little lethargic overall essentially. I'm recovering from some pretty gnarly heat exhaustion courtesy of the Florida sun. So don't worry, I'm alright, it's just... Yesterday evening was pretty rough, and even today I'm feeling it. I feel a little bit out of it, but it is what it is. I'll recover. Anyway, as always, if there's only a particular handful of stories that interest you, feel free to either use uh, the timestamps down in the description, or if you just scroll through on the time bar, the chapters should be labeled there for you. You can just listen to the ones that you're actually interested in. I will note that today we're going to be going at a bit of a quicker pace just because I don't feel the best, so we're just going to be all killer, no filler, give you the straight news stories, cut out the opinion pieces and talking, and just kind of... Feed you the news, get you in and out. Sound good? First things first, we're going to go ahead and go over all the major game releases in the last week according to Metacritic. So, on September 20th, we had Frostpunk 2 as well as the Karate Kid Treat Rumble. September 19th, we have Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars Reforged, as well as Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, Enotria The Last Song, and God of War Ragnarok for PC. September 18th, we have Key Locker turn-based cyberpunk action as well as UFO 50. On September 17th, we had Final Fantasy 16, the PC version, as well as the Plucky Squire and Train Sim World 5. And finally, on September 16th, we had Phoenix Springs. So, have you gotten to pick up or play these games? Next up, two games are free on Epic Games, those being Toem and The Last Stand Aftermath. These will be free until September 26th at 11 a.m. EST, so you might as well go redeem them because there's no better price than free. Next up, some new games were added to Nintendo Switch Online. That's coming from Nintendo of America on X. Quote, four classic SNES titles are now live for Nintendo Switch Online members. Those being Battletoads Double Dragon, Big Run, Cosmo Gang the Puzzle, and, uh, okay, I'm gonna try to say this last title. I have been learning Japanese for a bit here, so I'm gonna try to say with proper pronunciation. Kunio-kun no dodgeboarda yozenin shugo. I, I mean, I was still a little bit off, but I did my best. Anyway, those are the four games that are now available in the SNES tier, which means even if you only have the $20 basic NSO subscription, you can check out these games. Next up, the Starfield Shatterspace expansion release date was announced. That's coming from Starfield on X, quote, House Varun has always been a mystery, until now. Get a preview of what you can expect from your journey to Varun Kai in this developer deep dive. The Shatterspace story expansion arrives in Starfield on September 30th, pre-order here. So yeah, pre-orders are are available for this expansion so i mean if you want to pre-order an expansion i mean i mean you can do that. that that's crazy that this is where we're at with pre-orders but anyway as i mentioned they did do a whole developer deep dive thing so if you want to see some more gameplay learn some more about it you can go check that out otherwise it'll be out in a little over a week next up skate period is launching an early access in 2025 no seriously yeah the name the name of the game is just skate with a period after it just be like hey this is Skate. But anyway, this coming from Skate on X. Quote, We're incredibly stoked to announce that Skate, period, will be launching in early access in 2025. We'll share more details on what to expect in the coming months. End quote. So unfortunately, no official dates, no word as to if you're going to need to pre-order to get access to this or anything like that. But hey, I'm just glad that Skate is making a comeback and I look forward to trying out this game as soon as possible. Next up, this news was really surprising and I genuinely didn't believe it at first when I first saw it. But anyway, Freedom Wars HD remaster was announced. That's right. Freedom Wars, the PS Vita game, the all-time classic, it's finally back, baby. V the true Vita owners and lovers out there know what I mean. Anyway, they put up a trailer in the description reads, quote, Good morning, sinner. For the crime of existing, your one million year sentence begins today. Fulfill your duty to the Panopticon. In celebration of its 10-year anniversary, Freedom Wars, re Wars returns with an HD remaster. Create and customize your character and accessory partner to take on enormous uh, bioweapons called abductors in high-flying three-dimensional combat all while whittling down your million-year prison sentence to become a full-fledged citizen in a dystopian future where being born is a sin. Freedom Wars HD Remaster is coming soon to PlayStation. Every beloved feature of Freedom Wars returns. Master three-dimensional combat using the thorn to quickly traverse the battlefield and latch on to towering abductors. Dismantle abductors to harvest parts to craft and upgrade your equipment. Deep character customization with uh, dystopic cheat clothing designs. And create your own accessory, a customizable Android companion who will join you on your missions and aid in battle. Take it online to hunt abductors with friends and co-op gameplay. The HD Remaster features new and improved features from the original PS Vita version, including improved visuals, supporting 4K resolution, and 60 FPS, adjust to game balance and difficulty options, and updates to weapon crafting and upgrading. End quote. This will be releasing January 10th, 2025 for PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. So, unfortunately, it will not uh, be coming to Xbox, which, I mean, I guess kind of makes sense in a way, since it was on PS Vita originally, but, you know, the fact that it's coming to Switch... 
At the same time, we are also seeing the upcoming LEGO Horizons game going to Switch as well, but again, hey, I'm just glad that this game is making a comeback. But that being said, if you're on Xbox, definitely try to get your hands on maybe a PlayStation or a Switch or a PC, just is something in order to play this game, because seriously, it's, I, I mean, I, pl I put so many hours into this game back in the day. It is so, so good. And if you're into Monster Hunter type games, this is a very awesome, innovative spin on the formula. It's, it's an amazing game. Definitely check it out if you have any way to do so. Next up, Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition, the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S version specifically, was announced. So, obviously, Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition is already available on, you know, Xbox Series X and PS5 via backwards compatibility, but now this is just like a native version of it. But anyway, this is coming from Komatsu, quote, THQ Nordic will release Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition for PS5 and Xbox Series on October 15th for $29.99, the publisher announced. Users who already own the PS4 or XB1 version of Darksiders 2 will receive the PS5 or Xbox Series versions as a free upgrade. Users who pre-order Darksiders 2 for PS5 or Xbox Series by October 14th will receive the game at a 50% off discount price of $15. Uh, then they also go on to note just some of the improvements that are made with this remaster, including stunning visuals, experience the uh, feature and content rich action adventure in beautiful 4k enhanced by the use of ray tracing and delivering vastly improved lighting and shadows haptic feedback for you know if you have a ps5 and then fast loading obviously with this game being on consoles with pretty fast ssds there's going to be next to no loading screens which is nice of course again this will be releasing october 15th so i definitely recommend checking this game out if you haven't before as well as the first game and the third game and the uh, spin-off genesis of the series the entire darksiders series is absolutely fantastic and considering the fact that we know a new one is coming up soon, now will be a great time to dive in. Next up, Flappy Bird is returning after 10 plus years. I'm serious. It's coming from FlappyBird.org. Quote, hey all, it's really me, Flappy Bird. Just a decade ago, I was the talk of the town and soaring to new heights with my 100 million friends. Sadly, I had to leave the fame and spotlight behind to go home and find out who I really am. Thanks to my Super Flappy Bird fans, I'm refreshed, reinvigorated, and ready to soar again. The decade-long mission involved acquiring legal rights and even working with my predecessor to uncage me and rehatch uh, the official Flappy Bird game. After that, they list off some of the features of this game, including new characters and new game modes. So, yeah, it seems like there's a lot to look forward to here. It's uh, just like the original Flappy Bird, except with some more features and such. So... I'll definitely be checking this one out. I played the original Flappy Bird back in the day, you know, playing all the iPod touches and the old iPhones and iPads and stuff like that, see my friends break their screens over it, and, you know, I, I never got to that point of actually breaking my screen, but... I mean, I still raged at it quite a bit, I'm not gonna lie. Unfortunately, we don't have any official release date, it just says landing soon, so as soon as we know more, I'll definitely let you guys know, because uh, I'm not gonna lie, I saw this one, and it was definitely getting me in, this, in the nostalgia, to say the least. Next up, Microsoft has had to lay off 650 employees. This is coming from The Verge, quote, Microsoft is laying off around 650 employees in its gaming division today. Xbox chief Phil Spencer announced the layoffs to employees in an internal memo this morning seen by The Verge, quote, for the past year, our goal has been to minimize disruption while welcoming new teams and enabling them to do their best work. As part of aligning our post-acquisition team structure, this referring to the Activision Blizzard acquisition, and managing our business, we have made the uh, decision to eliminate approximately 650 roles across Microsoft Gaming, mostly corporate and supporting functions, to organize our business for long-term success. No games, devices, or experiences are being canceled, and no studios are being closed as part of these adjustments today. Throughout our team's history, we have had great moments, and we have had challenging ones. Today is one of the challenging days. I know that going through more changes like this is hard, but even in the most trying times, this team has been able to come together and show one another care and kindness as we continue to work uh, delivering for our players. We appreciate your support as we navigate these changes, and we thank you for your compassion and respect for each other. Phil. End quote. So... Just another and a long string of layoffs. Uh, if you guys have been watching the show for a little while, or even if not, you've probably heard in the news other uh, at other places where Microsoft had to lay off like almost 2,000 employees earlier in the year. So this is just another 650 on top of that, just due to various redundancies and cost-cutting measures and such. Ever since, well, all the Activisions they've, uh, all the acquisitions they made. Sorry, Activision acquisition getting all tongue twisted there, but um. Yeah, especially the Activision acquisition, obviously, because the other acquisitions they made, yeah, sure, they were big, especially with something like Bethesda, but after acquiring something as big and as in-depth with as many studios as Activision, yeah, I'm, I, you know, there's a lot of redundancies, that's definitely a lot of uh, costs on Microsoft's end to keep everything operational there, but at the same time, 
if you're gonna buy a studio, I mean, I feel like it's kind of your job in the first place to make sure that you can take care of these people, even after the acquisition takes place. They did, he did say in his memo, which we did trim out just because, you know, I didn't want to go through and read the entire thing because it was rather long, but they are, you know, giving these employees severance packages on their way out, but still, it's like... You're taking their livelihood from them, you know what I mean? But, I don't know. I just, at this point, all I can do is hope for nothing but the best for these employees. And hopefully, these uh, reoccurring layoffs in the industry can just, I mean, stop. I mean, there's always going to be layoffs, of course. But the rate and the amount that it's been happening in the last couple years is just, I mean, truly, it's unacceptable. And not just that, it's also unsustainable. So, seriously. We gotta figure something out. Next up, the entire Annapurna video game team resigned. I'm serious. This is coming from Bloomberg, quote, The entire staff of Annapurna Interactive, the video game publishing division of Megan Ellison's Annapurna Studio, resigned this month following a dispute with its owner. Annapurna Interactive uh, president Nathan Gary and his team had been negotiating with Ellison, the daughter of billionaire Larry Ellison, to spin off the video game division as an independent entity. If you guys remember earlier this year when Toys for Bob did something similar, yeah, this is essentially what they were trying to do here, but they go on. When Ellison pulled out of the negotiations, Gary and other executives resigned and were followed by around two dozen other staffers. Quote, All 25 members of the Annapurna Interactive team collectively resigned. Gary and the group said in a joint statement, This was one of the hardest decisions we have ever made to, uh, had to make, and we did not take this action lightly. A spokesperson for Annapurna confirmed that it had explored a spin-off and said the parties failed to reach an agreement, which led to the resignations. Quote, Our top priority is continuing to support our developer and publishing partners during this transition, Ellison said in a statement to Bloomberg News. We're committed to not only our existing slate of games, but also expanding our presence in the interactive space as we continue to look for opportunities to take a more integrated approach to linear and interactive storytelling across film and TV, gaming, and theater, end quote. So, you know what? This is a refreshing change of pace. Too much lately have we heard about, you know, companies like, I mean, just most recently, Microsoft laying off over 650 employees. But despite the fact that, yes, these people still did technically lose their jobs, at least it was in their hands. At least they were the one that made the choice. And they were like, no, you know what? I'm done with you. And they're the ones that walked out. So if anything, I have nothing but respect for these people. Round of applause. I hope you guys are obviously able to find sustainable work again soon because, I mean, you know, obviously you guys aren't employed now at this point, which is really unfortunate, but at the same time, uh, you know, considering how things have been going in the gaming industry lately, let's be honest, it probably wouldn't have been long before these developers were either fired, let go, or the studio was shut down in one way or another if, you know, a recent gaming patterns or anything to go off of. So, hey, again, at least they were able to make that choice for themselves. And finally, the next Battlefield game seems to be returning to the series' roots. This coming from IGN, quote, EA revealed fresh details on its untitled Battlefield game alongside its uh, first officially concept art, which IGN can exclusively reveal for the first time. IGN can also confirm that Battlefield will be returning to a modern setting after stints in WW1, WW2, and the near future. All of it points to back to a back to basics approach for the next Battlefield. On the decision to return to the modern era, Zompala says, quote, I mean, if you look back to the peak or the pinnacle of Battlefield, it's that BF3 or BF4 era where everything was modern. And I think we have to get back to the core of what Battlefield is and do that amazingly well, and then we'll see where it goes from there. He also goes on to mention that they're going back to 64 players per match rather than the 128 player count that they introduced in Battlefield 2042, as well as saying, quote, specialists will not be coming back, so classes are, ki are kind of at the core of Battlefield, and we're going back to that. And then at the bottom, uh, it says that he's careful to stress that BF 2042 wasn't a failure of a game, despite not doing as well as hoped. He notes that the development team uh, really spent a lot of time learning how to adapt and getting things back. But still, he says that EA doesn't want a repeat of the experience it had with 2042. Quote, we want it to be good out of the gate, end quote. And that's the important thing to note here, is that they're just trying to make a fun video game again. Just like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. I'm not saying that 2042 wasn't fun. I, I, I put a lot of time into that game. I had a lot of fun with 2042. But, you know, it's undeniable that there was clearly features missing at launch. There were some things that weren't even up to the developer standards or made in the way that the developers even wanted them to be made. And again, we're at a point where now it's been almost three years since 2042 came out. And only recently has it really come into its own and really become the full complete package that they were kind of advertising and saying the game would be a launch so you know it's, it seems like they're going back again to that bf3 bf4 era or mindset where it's like hey it's just going to be a fun multiplayer game straight out the gate sure it's probably going to be more of a live service type game like 2042 feature complete with live service drip feed and ba battle passes and all that yeah I, i'm not a fan of the stuff like that i miss when multiplayer experiences could just be 
multiplayer experiences. You dive in and play from time to time. There's not all the extreme commitment with, with, you know, battle passes and drip feed and all this nonsense, but you know, it is what it is. Conversation for another day. All that being said, it's really exciting to hear that they're trying to take Battlefield 4 back to that PS3 360 era, or I guess I should say really later in those life cycles because BF3 wasn't even until like 2011. So later in that life cycle, you know, that era, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. So I can't wait to see what the next Battlefield game is, what the setting's gonna be, just oh, like what the game's gonna be, right? Like I'm just, I'm really excited to play it as soon as it's ready. Obviously, we're probably still a couple of years away from that, but. Still, I love Battlefield, so I'm really excited. But anyways, that's all the stories that I got for you guys this week. So now I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on everything that we talked about today? Whether it's all the unfortunate layoffs or the fact that the devs at Annapurna took the decision in their own hands and walked out. Or maybe you're excited to learn more about the next Battlefield game. Whatever it is, whatever you're thinking, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. But anyway, this is Weekly GCAP. New episodes go live every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you want to catch them as soon as they go live, well then, I know to be here. But anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. Stay beautiful. I love you. You all base.